we're going to bring on a very loyal Saints fan, and that is Sean Landry making his debut on Time 2 Football. Sean, I appreciate you joining us for this episode of Time to Football. We got to talk about the NFL draft, and preferably we got to be talking about the Saints. Before we get into the specifics as far as like the names and who you guys got, if you had to give just a grade right now for the Saints Mm -hmm. and their Mm -hmm. NFL draft, what would it be? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, Houdat, represent very strong, very proud for all those loyal members of Houdat Nation. Uh, The grade I'd give them, honestly, um, and and I'm going to be blunt, I'm going to give them a C minus. Uh, The reason why I'm giving them a C minus is just because, you know, we lost so much uh, talent after the season. And obviously with trying to get under the cap, granted, we were experiencing a pandemic like many teams were. Uh, You know, we had a lot of uh, let a lot of good talent go. You know, the Trey Hendrickson's of the world, the Janoris Jenkins of the world, uh, Manuel Sanders. So there were so many different holes uh, that we could have filled. And I felt like based from what I was reading, all the mock drafts leading up to uh, last Thursday uh, corner, I felt like was the top need. And actually the day of the draft, I was reading um, reports that we were going to try to work our way up into the top 10 uh, and, you know, just very, very. Uh, small whispers of it, and then lo and behold, you know, draft draft night goes on. You see, we set we sit at twenty eight. <clears throat> so, um, you know, we didn't draft a corner to the third round, I believe. And so, you know, sometimes getting the guys in the later rounds actually pay bigger dividends than those you draft in the first round. And uh, so, I'd give us a D, just or a C minus rather, going into that D uh, grading area, just because I felt like we could have done more. The Saints should have done more. Um, and made bold moves just because a lot of the teams are making bold moves, you know, going into the off season, going into the draft preparations, things of that nature, because, you know, a lot of teams have this must win now mentality, not, you know, we can't just wait and rebuild three, four years and, and expect uh, to achieve greatness. So uh, the great I'd give them, it would be a, about a C minus, but I, I like some of the picks we got, you know, obviously uh, the Pete Warner pick, you know, that goes back to Sean, like Ohio state players, um, so you know, there are there are some ties to that, but I'd give them a C minus if I had to be honest with you. Wow, very blunt, and I like that because that shows that you're a little bit unbiased and you're just seeing it how it is. Um, mm-hmm. And and kind of talking about the draft picks and uh, who you specifically pick the New Orleans Saints organization. I think mm-hmm. first off, we have to talk about the first round pick because that caught a lot of people off guard. Mm-hmm. Peyton Turner, mm-hmm. what was up with that? So uh, that surprised me too, but then again, it didn't surprise me. You know, uh, if I had to choose at the end of the off season this year, who to keep and who to, who to cut, I really was hoping we would keep Trey Hendrickson just because he was an unnatural talent that nobody knew when he was coming out of the 2017 draft, you know, when we had that great draft class of him and Kamara uh, to name a few. And so I feel like, again, we didn't move up in the top 10. I was hoping we would to draft a corner. Uh, when I learned that J.C. Horn's dad is uh, former St. Great Joe Horn, I was like, cool, that'd be awesome to have his kid come come home and play for his dad's old club. Uh, so I was really hoping we'd get a corner. But uh, when we drafted Peyton Turner, uh, the same thing we touched on earlier in the week was what was up with that? And, and I felt like for two reasons, you know, the first the first thing is corner was our biggest need. But the second reason is you extended Marcus Davenport's fifth year option, which I, I hate to say it. I kind of feel like he's leaning more a little towards that bust uh, title uh, just because he can't stay healthy and he really hasn't been able to push off the line, so to speak. So uh, hopefully Peyton is a rotational player. That's probably what he'll end up doing to start the year uh, or start his career rather is be that rotational player. But then I'm hearing whispers that they're going to try to build him long term, you know, because eventually Cam Jordan's greatness is going to have to come to an end as well. So um I'm a little surprised by the pick, but then again, you know, only time will tell um, whether or not he's going to be a really great saint for many years to come, or he's going to be one of those guys that's going to be out of the door in in two to three years. Yeah, so it makes a lot of sense when you put it in perspective as far as Trey Hendrickson, they lost to the Bengals. Cam Jordan, obviously, like you said, can't be great forever. Marcus Davenport as well is, you know, like you said, could be leaning towards that bus category, which is kind of unfortunate because they traded up for him. So do you feel like that they chose a defensive end like Peyton Turner uh, because they were leaning towards 
like the defensive line was going in that direction. And if so, why would you choose Peyton Turner over maybe someone like Gregory Rousseau, who was highly touted as a better defensive end or a better edge rusher in many mm-hmm. mock drafts? Yeah. Well, I know you had uh, Penn State's, what's his, I can't remember his first name. His last name is like Awe. Jason I know you Owe. Had, yeah, you had Jason Owe as our first pick uh, just because, I mean, Sean likes drafting guys. Him and Mickey both like drafting guys who can get after the quarterback. You've seen it in years past with David Onyemata. You've seen it with Cam Jordan. You've seen it with Sheldon Rankins, uh, especially when we like na- knocking Matt Ryan on his on his keister every now and then. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know what – persuaded him persuaded them rather to draft him i mean he was the i think going into the draft he was 106th best player on the board and so maybe they felt like other teams would go up there and snag him before they did and maybe that's why they they got him with the first overall pick as a toes as opposed to waiting in the later rounds and getting him then um but again it goes back to what i was saying earlier you know if if marcus marcus davenport doesn't pan out this year and obviously cam jordan uh, is getting a little bit up there in age. I mean, you're going to have to get a guy that, that has that speed and is going to be able to get the quarterback, you know, off his, off his feet every now and then. But then I also know that he's had, he's had injury uh, concerns in, at Houston in his college career. So, all, again, only time will tell whether or not he's going to be a, a great for a long time or, again, he's going to be out in a couple of years like most, most players are. And a player that we may have to see that could also be – a great or maybe out of the league in in a few years would be Ian book taken by the saints. Now, Mm -hmm. a lot of people are talking about, okay, Drew Brees retired, bring in a quarterback, draft a quarterback. Sean, talk to me about Ian book. Uh, well, I kind of feel like he may end up being the, the steal in the, in the second tier of quarterbacks. I know, I know he's kind of considered maybe the third tier, you know, third and fourth tier, but I really felt like he should, maybe should have gone earlier. Um, I don't have a whole lot of faith in Kellen Mond. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of faith in, in Kyle Trask. I mean, they had they linked us to drafting Kyle Trask in the later rounds, and I think he's going to be a glorified backup. I really don't think he'll he'll be a starter uh, out there in Tampa. Uh, but going back to Ian Book, so I actually, right before uh, you had me on, I actually did a little bit compare and contrast because, you know, Ian Book is the all-time winningest quarterback in Notre Dame history, and I compared him to, to another Notre Dame great, Brady Quinn, uh, who, you know, back in 07, Brady was supposed to be a top five pick. Obviously, we saw he fell all the way to the, to the lower 20s and Cleveland brought him home, uh, which he never really uh, translated his game at the pro re- the pro level. Excuse me. Um, so with Ian, you know, I compared his stats to Brady's and he had both of both Brady and Ian had similar stats their junior year of college at Notre Dame. Um, but Ian, on the other hand, had an overall best uh percentage than Brady. Brady had a 134 quarterback rating through four years at Notre Dame, whereas uh, Ian had 147 uh, quarterback rating at all four years at Notre Dame. He's got, a, he's, he's got flashy feet. Uh, he can make plays out of the po- outside of the pocket, which if you've known now, that's a trend in the NFL. A lot of quarterbacks are able to make more plays out of the pocket than in. And uh, again, he's, he's a six foot less quarterback, you know, so he's, he's built similarly to Drew style. So, uh, but we've shown time and time again, you know, with Teddy and with Taysom that Sean can make something out of nothing and he can really help bring out the full potential in quarterbacks that a lot of teams may or may not be familiar with. So, again, only time will tell. I think he'll he'll be a third string going this year. You know, obviously it's going to be Jace, Jameis and Taysom in the uh, offseason competing for the starting role. You know, whoever loses that battle will be the backup. But uh, we all know that. Sean likes to incorporate Taysom in, in various packages, so Ian may move up to a backup role uh, at that point. But, uh, again, only time will tell whether or not he can be great. I mean, look at Tom, for example. Tom went in the sixth round, and 20 years later in seven Super Bowls, you know, is now one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. So, again, it goes back to the draft. You know, you find you find a lot of rarity um, in the later rounds, and, and – those oftentimes pay huger dividends than quarterbacks you draft in the first round. I mean, you, you've seen it so far with Kyler and with Lamar and Deshaun, but you look at the guys like the Sam Darnolds of the world, the Josh Rosens of the world, the Mr. Biskies of the world, you know, they, they haven't panned out as great as quarterbacks in the later rounds, you know, like Garoppolo, for example, when he's healthy uh, to really show you what you have going forward in the long run. And if Ian book is their guy, that's, 
their guy. That's a prerogative if they feel like, like you said, is going to be uh, a third string. Is he going to move up into back backup role? If Taysom Hill is going to work in different packages. But it's an interesting deci- decision from Sean Payton and the whole Saints organization that at the second round pick that they had, they took Pete Werner, which good player. Mm-hmm. But then later on, you had Kyle Trask getting taken by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the end of that round. Then mm-hmm. you had Kellen Mond, you had Davis Mills, and all these mm-hmm. other quarterbacks were being taken. Do you feel like that the Saints at that point were like, oh man, we regret not taking Kyle Trask, uh, who mm-hmm. there was rumors out there that he was very well liked by the New Orleans Saints. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. even Davis Mills and Kellen Mond that many other analysts ranked mm-hmm. higher than Ian Book. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, and truth be told, all three of those guys were on our mock drafts um, leading up to last week. But I just kind of feel, you know, Kyle had one good year at Florida, and that's no knock on on him as a, as a professional athlete. You know, he's I'm sure he'll do well in the NFL. But, you know, you look at him and I talked to a friend of mine the other day. I said, you know, look at him in the Cotton Bowl. He did really well throughout his full year. And granted, it was a weird 2020 was a weird year for all college teams. And Florida had a really good year last year. Uh, and that's why he was able to, statistically speaking, do very well. But leading up to the Cotton Bowl, you take away Kyle Pitts, you, you take away Kadarius Tony, you take away your starting running back, and what are you? He really couldn't make the other guys around him better. He couldn't elevate the other guys around him better. And just that's just for an example. Um, I really didn't expect us to take a quarterback. You know, honestly, Sean has said ever, ever since Drew announced he was he wasn't coming back that he felt good with with. Taysom and Jameis going forward um he felt like both guys had a uh, a conviction about them to really take the reins uh and really elevate the Saints to the next level that we've been missing the last four years in the postseason um but then again maybe Ian maybe there was something about Ian that caused him to not go earlier than than you know the fourth round um but I, I really hope he does well. I really, I'd really like to see what he does. Um, you know, I definitely will tell you it'll make the quarterback competition interesting next year because Taysom and Jameis are on one-year prove-it deals this year. Um, so if both guys don't really spark an excitement within the fan base, within the organization, and Jameis ends up going elsewhere next year and, and Taysom does the same, I mean, you could be looking at, at Ian Book being the starter moving forward. But again, uh, only time will tell. It's it's really too early to crown crown him uh, in his success without seeing how he's gonna how he's gonna do uh, when the lights are bright, and especially in preseason as well. How he's gonna react when he's got bigger, stronger, faster guys coming after him as opposed to those in college. Well, only time will tell. Maybe Sean Payton pulls something together and gets that whole roster uh, back to back to glory in the in the playoffs again. But Sean, appreciate your insight, and thank you so much for joining us for the show and. We hope to have you for many more episodes in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And, uh, you know, like I said, I look forward to being on here if, if given another shot at it. And that was Sean Landry giving us his take on the New Orleans Saints and their draft picks.